The only way for it to work is to use fewer and fewer pixels every time you shift up the color palette. Welcome everybody to our Friday edition of the stream. I think today we might do some graphics actually. I've been doing some tile set stuff, which I think would be really nice to cover on stream. I want to talk you guys through how I made this tile set um, because this is actually an auto tiled tile set as well. I did auto tiling in Unity last night for the first time. Uh, so it might be nice to check that out. So what that looks like as far as like auto tiling goes is I just draw the tile and it auto tiles. How good's that? The idea behind doing this in Unity specifically and not in tiled was because I want Unity to be able to procedurally place these tiles where Unity can determine, hey, I want the character to pass through this space here, so I'll delete these tiles and these tiles and these tiles to make a gap, for example. Or I want the player to be able to land in this area, so I'll create tiles there. So <clears throat> trying to take the binary logic of there needs to be a tile here that doesn't need to be a tile here and then turn that into designed interesting looking levels um, that are tiled nicely and um, and look good so this was the setup that we started with yesterday and i know that this is going to be based on bricks so i want to try a few different kinds of patterns here i want to try a version that's closer to this but where the bricks are divided a bit more evenly as far as their horizontal size. This comes back down to just like thinking about the math of like how big is a brick and how many bricks per tile, that kind of thing. So, you know, if this is the tile, we've got 16 pixels, right? If we make it say there are two bricks per, per tile, right? There's a pretty big bricks and there's two pixels worth of mortar between the bricks. And you can easily just do something like this. All right, and that should, should tile pretty well. Um, I'm gonna use this and we're gonna go straight into the game and see what that does. So you can see here how big these bricks are. Now, just looking at this, we can start filling in a little more depth and detail and we can start giving them some shading so <clears throat> one thing that I would do is probably take the brightest part of the brick or the, or the highest part the bit that has some um, access to the light and start giving that a little bit more of a lighter color and then the part just below the brick would go a little darker right we might drop down a color in the corners here to give it a little bit less of a square look. So already we've got something a little, with a little more structure to it, but they're quite big bricks, right? So it's up to us to ask the question, like, do we like this style of brick for this character size? And I think they're quite long. I, I think personally, I'd probably go for something a little smaller. So already I know, because basically this isn't the size of brick, the size of a brick is this plus this, right? Because this, there's only one seam. So let's try to create a second seam by taking all of this and shifting it over, bring all of this across and define a second spot here. All right, so we've just halved the size of our bricks now we have a lot more bricks. Um, I think already these are way too detailed. Like for the center brick it's too detailed because there's so much visual repetition. It's really clear that it's a repeating texture. So I would flatten these out a lot more. Um, I would go for something a little more tighter together in terms of its packing. Cause I think this double pixel worth of mortar is, it's not working for me. So I'll bring this up and I'll bring this up. Um, that still leaves us with two pixels worth of free empty space. 
and each of these bricks is six bricks tall. So if we chop one pixel off of each of them, we'll have four per brick, and we should should be able to put one more brick down here. However, we've still got another issue where there's not enough for the mortar at the bottom of this brick on this tile. And three doesn't divide evenly into 16. So because it's 16 pixels, we can't have evenly sized bricks with one pixel's worth of mortar if there's only three of them. So the next option is to go four, right? Which is a little harder. Or we could make one brick smaller, right? We could eat into one of them. And then... Well, in this case, we'll have one that's bigger and two that are smaller. So maybe this one would be the bigger one, the middle one. Not that it really matters because it's being tiled. 16 bricks. So where was I? Yeah. So you can see how this actually kind of ruins things because they're not, um, they line back up again. So bricks, the way bricks work, just in case you don't know, is you have a brick, you have a second brick, and then the brick that goes on top straddles them, right? So this needs to be like this on top. That's how you create strength in the structure because if you had it the other way, like this, and like this, then the whole way up the wall, there's a spot that's just mortar. And so the entire wall could come apart at that seam. So, I mean, we could definitely shift this over and then bring this over to here. That should give us something that's a little better. Mm, I imagine this needs to be over a little, one more pixel, actually. So that gives us a little bit better. So now it's tiled properly. And um, it seems like this is probably gonna be one of our best bets. Right now, we've got a setup where we have reasonably good repetition. So we know that this can tessellate well. And that's the, the fundamental thing, right? I always talk about this in design where you have to you have to understand the um, dependencies first so this whole solution depends on it tiling in the first place once we've got the tiling in a very rigid way we can start shaving away some of that rigidity and make it more natural and smooth and and interesting straight off the bat like if i was doing one of these central tiles um, i know that i want it to be darker on the inside than on the outside so i am going to take the shade tool and I'm just gonna take everything and knock it down by one, right? Maybe even by two. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take these away, right? This lets us, when we go to the actual solution, this lets us have something that's got a lot, uh, it's a lot less focal, right, on the insides. And that's kind of what we're hoping for here. So I'm going to go ahead and darken off most of this so that this transitions a little nicer. And right on the very edges as well. So this gives us, again, much more natural setup. Again, I am sort of experimenting as I do this. And ultimately, like I said, I really want this to be to feel more organic. So we're going to try to work our way through to get something that feels a little more natural as we develop here. So one thing I liked about the previous tiles that we started with before we uh, got started today was I quite liked the way that those tiles <clears throat> had a, uh, a defined edge, right? Here we've kind of slowly worn our way through and it's one of the, the techniques that I like quite a lot when I do this kind of work uh, is to have a sort of like, it's actually brightest not not on the outside but just in from the outside and then we contrast down into that darker color that's the brightest one there that's the darkest there so basically just gonna do that and i'm gonna try to create 
these bigger bricks that are sort of more caps. This isn't how I did it last night. I do it differently every time I do it. The goal is to find a workflow that makes sense over time. I don't always just know exactly what I'm doing, but I know what the fundamentals are, right? I know what I'm looking for. So here I'm trying to create a bit more change in the structure, right? This line that we've drawn down here, it's not a straight line, right? It's a line that's sort of a bit more rugged. And if we send that over and see what it looks like, it gives us a little more, gives us a little more. I definitely want to make um, a sort of a cap at the very top here. I think we should probably make it more dramatic, right? I kind of want these caps to be even more, maybe even bigger, maybe twice the size of the others. Right now they're very, very even and I don't really like that. So maybe we'll try just scaling them up. It's sort of more paved at this point if we do it like that. Although that's not so bad, huh? But definitely want to bring them in. Generally when I draw, like I said, when I'm, when I'm drawing a shape, if I'm drawing it in, in a way that's supposed to look 3D and it's top lit, I will often give it uh, its shape, right? And what I'll do is I'll try to highlight the edge that's up here. This edge gives the impression, it strengthens this shape appearing like it's got like a right angle to it. We call this specular light in 3D modeling. And you can even further enhance that by adding little tiny highlights. And you could go like as far as you want, but the only way for it to work is to use fewer and fewer pixels every time you shift up the color palette. So you can see how many pixels are devoted to this flat edge and how many are devoted to this edge, but then how many are to the sort of like flattened areas and then how few pixels we use for the very, very, very corner. It's kind of unintuitive to have the edges be brighter, but you want to avoid pillow shading in this instance, right? So pillow shading is when you think of yourself as the light source, right? And you just shade from the front. That's very, very rarely the case. So even I struggle with it. Like I was thinking, okay, well, this is further. So this should be darker, right? It's further from me. It's closer to the darkness. But if it's top lit, really, this might be brighter, this edge. Or in this instance, right? Like, why would this, why would this be brighter than this? It's like, well, that's just how you, that's just how you create depth. Kind of don't mind this idea of having them be twice as big on the outside. Play with it. We'll see what we get. A little bit of funniness going on here. I think we might have to step back and think about the tessellation on these ones. Yeah, definitely some weirdness here. I think maybe we would bring this seam up and then maybe even, there we go. That's a little bit better. I want to give myself time to do the best work I can do. I'm still not a hundred percent on these, this inside set. I still think it looks really samey and it may just come down to creating a bunch of alternating tiles. Um, I also want to have a look at the way that the top and bottom tiles collide with each other. So like this and this, they create a little tile here because at the very top of this, let's come back here, we get a seam. So what I want to do is either work that seam back or shift it up. And I think I can shift it up just a couple pixels. I'm kind of looking to make it uneven. I'm not really looking to follow the rule. Yeah, that's Sartak. That's exactly why. So yesterday, Stringbats, you were mentioning, you know, why not just flip back and forth between programs? This issue that we've just highlighted that we've been trying to resolve would be way easier to catch 
if we were using a tile map editor and it would be way easier to fix because you could fix it right here. Uh, you wouldn't have to flip back and forth looking for the relative spot where it makes that mistake and then fixing it. And what I like now about this is that the tiles aren't one to one the same size. Uh, I still think we could do maybe a little better at making I can still see a line, a very clear line, all the way down here. And I'm thinking I might just, I want to experiment with having some bricks just be a brighter color. It looks good here. We'll see how it looks in the in the game. That's kind of the litmus test. It can't just look good in one place. Okay, so this has to go away. Let's create a little bit of variation. One thing that I want to explore is in this tile here, making it almost completely uh, one color. It's going to darken the whole thing, but it may give us some more structure to play with. It's not quite as uniform, right? Again, it's got some variation from here to here to here. It feels more like three stages than like two stages, right? And it it gives our, our eyes way more breathing room, right? This was so noisy before. Let's step it back and we'll show you again. There's so much going on here. It's such a repeating pattern. It makes these details less impactful because there's so many lines around here but again if we work our way down suddenly our eye knows a lot more where to look it's a lot easier for us to figure it out so now the goal would be to basically take those two steps and feather that back too so all the way along these edges and then here as well Uh, so that's looking pretty good, huh? That's actually looking, to me, uh, it might be hard for you to see, but I think that's looking much more haphazard. Got some issues to work through here, but we're getting a lot closer, I think. The biggest issue I can see now is just this situation, where we're going from very bright to very dark very quickly. So I'm going to start brightening these ones up. That's looking much better now. That feels way more consistent. And I don't love this corner. We can come back to that in a second. Outside of that, it's actually looking very clear now. I feel like I can really read it. So if I do this, now this won't look great at first. I just want to get a gauge for what it does to the general color. I think it definitely can't be brighter than the darkest color here. So rather than do that, what I might do is take all of these colors and, and brighten them up by one. So like everything in here. So now we've brought everything up a little bit to give it some, just some balance. What do you think of that? I don't know how I feel about it versus the previous version. I might copy it all, bring it down a bit, go to a new layer, paste it, and just flip back and forth for a sec. It's that versus that. It definitely feels super subdued here. And it makes me, it makes me want to do more of this. Um, shifting to give this more variation if we're going to go down like that i get the feeling they're still kind of a little bright the, the, the contrast is still really high i wonder if i can just knock it back one and get something that's still good it's quite dark now but hey i don't mind that 
I'm really quite happy with this so far. And I think that we are in a position where we can start adding some foliage. What I'm trying to go for here is like vines with leaves. That's the goal. Uh, what I'm doing is effectively, because I know that this is going to repeat, I'm just sticking to having the foliage be on the corner blocks, the unique blocks. So what I'm doing is I'm just thinking about how plants work and I am having them sort of reach up and outwards. And as I do that, I'm thinking about where the light touches. So if it's like a, a leaf, like we'll, we'll use a bit bigger of an example, like this, right? Where it's sort of reaching up at the end like this. So we can do something like this to replicate that sort of aspect of it. And we can go even more exaggerated by highlighting that very, very edge that's facing us. So what I'm doing here is a very, very stripped down version of that, where I'm just taking one edge and I'm just adding a little bit of a specular to it, maybe even just two colors. And as I do that, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of shadow to reinforce the shape so you can see a bit better. And I'm trying to create some contrast, trying to create a little bit of something you can see. Uh, if I use this color, it's too similar. The palette is designed in such a way that everything on this vertical is the same brightness or a similar brightness. So I wouldn't use um, this color with this color because they're the same. Uh, one thing I want to do is I want to have surfaces that you can stick to, right? Those include walls and ground surfaces. And so I think what I want to do is devise a way of layering tiles that have those extents on them and I specifically I want to bring the character in here so that I can review this in a way that works and I think it's really important to do that I think it's really important to have this structure this, this setup where you can actually just Evaluate whether you like something on the most basic terms Because ultimately that's what the player is going to see the player doesn't really care about your technical Restrictions or limitations or why you did a certain thing. They don't really care about that. They care about what it looks like in the end So I'm not sure if we'll do this for the grass playing with scale is so important the only thing I'm concerned about with the bigger shapes is that it might be a little hard to control them. So in this instance, if it's not tile based, then we can do what we want with it really. Let's go jumbo size grass. He's a Minish. That's what I was kind of thinking, like maybe something like Minish Cat. I kind of like that a lot. I really like this. Seeing that animate would be really nice. I wonder if there's a way that we can signify that green is the color specifically for things that you can attach to in a way that's separate from this foliage. Because I like the foliage. So I think maybe we make this like more dead. It's actually kind of a cool idea. Could go to a less saturated brown. Maybe that's better. All right, we'll use that one. I really like these. I think these are great. What do you reckon? Do you think they're a little bright? Just all of it? But I wonder if they could be... Just dimmed down a little bit to fit. Too eye-catching, hey? I agree. Like, I don't think I would put this one here. I think I would put it like here, maybe. 
but I wouldn't put it in this dark space. They are very, they're very, they're very bright. Maybe we go down even one more. So we're still going for green grass. Because that's a mechanic. But I think these leaves, these autumn leaves are a nice touch. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice.